This is a supplemental log for Friday, March 25th, 2011. This is the continuing saga of all of the plotters against me that helped destroy my life. This segment is exclusively for Judge Maria Rezos and the two other judges pre prior to her that I have known, just like I knew three chairmen of housing. I have known three chairmen of housing. And everybody would like to give a shout out to Miss Daniela. I think her YouTube name is Fox Fly. She made a lot of wonderful suggestions. And I don't have to be such a wretched, wretched, melodramatic, think I'm an actor guy, other than just present the facts and the evidence as they are. I'm angry, I'm all of that, but that's for another time, another situation. This is about presenting the facts, recording it, in case something happens to me. This is the judgment and order of Judge Maria Rezos. Okay? And respondents ordered to show cause to restore this proceeding to the calendar and the motion by Stephen S. Wontrop to be removed as guardian ad litem are consolidated for determination. In rendering this decision, the court considers the respondents ordered to show cause, petitioners' affirmation and opposition, respondents' reply affirmation, affirmation and petitioners' sir reply only. The court acknowledges receipt and did read Respondent Philip Dreiss's ex parte submissions. However, as they were ex parte, they cannot be considered by the court as it reaches its decision. That's what the problem is, because my guardian ad litem, Mr. Stephen Wanstrop's hands were tied. This is a gentleman where I absolutely abused him humiliated him, degraded him, blasted crap all over him, all over the internet in front of everybody, all the way to the White House. He filed papers against the court, um, to the court against me. Judge Maria Rezos brought a big cop in there. I'm not violent, I don't need to do anything like that. I'm a pretty educated guy. I know what to do and what my limits are. But that shenanigan, that show, that performance that was calculated and performed did accomplish my goal. I finally got him to work for me instead of working for human resources to put me out, as we've seen in the last segment. And that's how it works. You've got, this is a war of the intellectuals against poor people who don't have an education. And it can be traced to a race-based situation because the people they're dealing with are the disenfranchised that have been apartheid on a federal reservation, which is the largest Indian reservation, the most populated Indian reservation in the United States of America, which is New York City Housing Authority, with approximately 800,000 tenants. But only 500 of them are registered, and those 300 are supposed to be in line to inherit that apartment and it's the elimination of the of the of the administrative process that leads to the federal violations of diverting funds and title six violations okay on the civil rights uh, uh, act of uh, 1967 which is you're doing it to black people, you're doing it to Puerto Ricans, you're doing it to the disenfranchised, you're doing it to poor people. That the federal government through Congress said that they take care of. But it was through the Clinton administration, it is alleged that it was through the Clinton administration's desire to eliminate welfare that your governor was probably the premier architect who unleashed NYCHA who dissolved any competent oversight, just like the regulators of the banks. It's been shown that the, that the Democratic Party or the Democrats did orchestrate this big thing about this housing bubble. Okay? 
and they, they, they forced banks to make loans that they knew were going to fail. And then they want to blame somebody else for those bank failures and that all of that money that went down the tube. But it was designed to keep them in power. And when you're in power, you can keep cover things up. Okay? So this is what's happening, people. And in the sir reply, let me show you here, where this guy says it's his... I'll read it, you know, we'll, you'll get it in the book and online, okay? You've got a NYCHA committing perjury in this document right here. This is the sir reply. NYCHA commits perjury. Let me show you where. First of all, they said you got to be over 62 years old to, to be living there. And that I was the only one that was living in that apartment that, uh, that was in that development. Now we find out that's not true. And when we find out that's not true, the judge want to give them exemptions. You can't go back. Okay, here we go right here, which is Carol Brookins. Carol Brookins was living there before she turned 62. Okay, they didn't want to count that one. Let me give you another one. We're going to get better. Barbara Davidson. Barbara Davidson is the sister of Margaret who works for Councilman Comrie, and when it got this bad... Barbara Davidson right here. When it got this bad, they got her to move out of Shelton House. That's how big it is. Barbara Davidson had been, been, Davidson's been living there for 20, 30 years. She didn't take the buyout, just like my aunt didn't take the buyout. That's why we were still in that apartment. They want to make it senior development, but they, got, they were supposed to give you $15,000. Okay? Now, this is the big deal right here. This is Mr. James Edwards in apartment 6N. He's got a Michelle Guy who lives there. She was born in 1976. What is she doing living there? He was born in 1947. Now, you see, he's got a son, a son, and a daughter. A son and a daughter right there. Now, that's where the fraud comes in. Because in the paper, Knight just reclassified him as a grandson, not a son. And the judge copied the exact same stuff. That's what I'm going to hit her with, along with the trial transcript of where Nietzsche said nobody under 62 lives there. Now, here is the beauty. This is Cynthia Hill, okay, with her husband, Babako, okay? Yeah, she was born in 55, he was born in 66. But you got to understand, the least, I've got it on video, that she said that he just, they put him on the lease three years ago. That's another point of perjury for NYCHA in the settlement of the minutes or the transcript. Okay? That's how they're all busted. Just presenting the facts. Just presenting the facts. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Yeah. Supplemental log, November 29, 2010. This is Miss Cynthia Hill, the last real tenant association president that there was. They fixed the whole, Khadijah Wilson fixed the vote to put Neva Harper in there. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is the evidence that right now we've got everybody committing perjury in court because you're not a senior citizen. You live there, and your husband's name was added on to the lease, what, two years ago? <laughs> so now when they put me out, weren't they doing a whole lot of wrong? Yeah. And Neva Harper, they propped up a tenant association president so she can help eliminate people out of that building as a form of redlining. Yes. <laughs> she has a handicap apartment. She's not handicapped. And so does Ozia Mitchell, who was also the last tenant association president that and they put also there to help. Green of $20,000. Oh, Cynthia here from a tenant associate president, November 29, 2010, telling it like it is. Thank that's you. my sister. And this is the one. That's right. I want my picture with her. This is the lady. This is the lady <laughs> that helped me. Right. Fight that. Fight the fight. This is that's the right. one that kept telling me, Bryce, don't let them put you out like this. Don't yeah. do this. So and I went and did this my work. And that's Malcolm right there. He's the one that's helping put people out. Yes, he is. That, that, and that's the tenant associate president telling it. That's what they do here. Right here at 8909 162 Street. 
at Shelton Houses, New York City Housing Authority. There it is right there. You heard it from the Turn Association President, Cynthia Hill. Thank you, baby. All right, this is my friend. What's your name? You got to say your name. Marvin. Hi, Marvin. Good. Make the snowball. Yeah, he's under supervision. He's here with his dad. I'm not trying to kidnap the child. <laughs> it's not a kidnapping. All right. So how's your wife? The wife okay? Yeah, it's okay. She works. Mother okay? She's working? Yeah, she told me she got a job as a home attendant. Yeah. Uh, her mother's upstairs? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, this is Marvin. You live upstairs, right, Marvin? Yeah. Okay, throw the snowball. There he is. That's it. That's it. Ah, okay. You waiting on the school bus? You waiting on the school bus? You waiting? You waiting for the school bus, right? All right. All right. Can I please have a dollar? Somebody can have a quarter, 50 cent a dollar. I'm homeless, I'm broke, I'm hungry. Please, can somebody help me? Can somebody help me? I'm homeless. I used to live right across the street over there. Go ahead, show them Shelton House. Shelton, that's that building right there. The one with the scaffolding. That's it, I used to live at Shelton House. But now I'm homeless, I'm homeless. I've got no money, I got nothing to eat. Can somebody help me? Can somebody help me? Is there a God? There can't possibly be a God or he couldn't let this happen to me. Those black politicians in the mirror destroyed me and no one, no one was doing a damn thing to help me. Other All right, we just met a nice couple. I was walking on the beach. Very interesting affair. This, um, who wanted to tell the marshal when he came to get me to, to send you, to give me your regard. Well, what did you do when you had all of the information that says that Niger is as crooked as the tips of the Nazi cross? 